Hi everyone, it's Michael from Becker Games. If you haven't seen the introduction to the database wizard yet, you can watch that first by clicking on the annotation. I'm going to go ahead and start up database wizard. So I'm going to start off with a blank empty project. The first thing you'll want to do is just save the project. So you go to file, save as project. I'll type in DB wizard sample. This will create a folder for the project. Then we'll create a visual studio project and give it an app code folder. So I'll start up Visual Studio and I'll go to File, New, Website. And I'll type in Website DB Wizard Sample. And I'll choose Empty Website. And I'll right click, New Folder, and type app underscore code. Then I want to set my connection string in DB Wizard. So I'll go to the connection string tab. Your connection string can be found on WinHost or whoever you use as a host. So I'll just copy and paste my settings, server, database, user ID, password, whether it's a trusted connection or not. Then we want to set the connection string name on the Visual Studio tab in DB Wizard. You can set it to anything you want. I'll set mine to database sample. Now go back to the connection string tab and copy the connection string. Now go to Visual Studio, web.config, and paste the connection string. Now we need to set the directories. So go to the directories tab on database wizard, go to the database load directory, and click find. Now find your app code folder for your website. So my documents, Visual Studio 2010, websites, Website DB Wizard Sample, App Code, and click OK. Now copy and paste that into the database save directory. These directories can and usually should be the same. The load directory is where the program loads previously generated CS code. It will load custom code from these CS files. It will also create a backup of the database folder in the load directory. The save directory is where the program outputs a database folder with all of the newly generated CS files. If you had a load directory as well, then your custom code inside of the region custom code will be restored. Now we need to create a table so that we can test out everything. So we go back to the main tab and click create table. Give a plural table name. I'll type people. Then provide a singular table name. I'll type person. Now give it an ID as the first variable. Give it a type of int and no min and no max. And don't allow null values. Hit add apply changes. Now go back to name and type name. Make it a string data type. Give it a min of 0 and a max of 100 characters. And let's go and allow nulls. Now to show off something really cool with this program, give the name of age and give the type of time span and give a min and max of zero. The nifty thing about time span is that it doesn't have a database type of time span and we must use the big int type, but this database wizard handles all of that for us behind the scenes. All we have to do is worry about the time span data type it'll handle the rest. So let's make it allow nulls and add apply changes. If you wanted to edit any of these variables, all you have to do is click the variable that you want to change. Make your changes and then click add apply changes. You can also check variables in order to delete them. So let's hit create table. Let's go and save our project. So let's go to file and save project. Now let's go ahead and generate our script files. Let's just hit generate scripts. Done. Let's go to documents, Becker games, DB wizard, DB wizard sample, scripts, init database. Now to run the script, you can use anything you want. I'm going to use SQL server management studio 2008 R2. There's a link in the description for a free download of it. 
Since I have it installed, I just need to double click the file. I'm going to first run init database. I'm going to click connect object explorer and enter in my settings. Then I'll hit connect. Now that we're connected, we need to reopen that file. So we reopen init database and it says set ANSI nulls off. This enables DD wizard to be able to say equals null instead of just is null and so that it can handle nulls correctly. So let's hit execute and it shows the query executed successfully. Now let's minimize and double click drop and create all. This will drop and recreate tables for us. DB wizard doesn't back up your database data. So you'll need to do that yourself. So we just hit execute and it says query executed successfully. We can test that it worked by right clicking tables and hitting refresh. It shows people. We can right click people and click design. We see that ID is an int data type and that it's a primary key. We see that name is an int varchar with a maximum of 100 characters and that age is a big int. Also note that name and age both allow nulls while the primary key does not allow nulls. If you wanted to, you could right-click the table, People, and click Script Table As, and hit Insert To. And then click New Query Editor Window. You could create a default insert script for your database. This would be very useful in debugging. So, let's close out of SQL Server Management Studio. And now that our database has been created, we can generate our CS files. So let's first close out of Visual Studio and then click Generate Database CS Files. Now let's reopen the Visual Studio project and you'll see the database folder has been created in the app code folder in our website. If we already had a database folder, it would have created a backup just in case anything went wrong. The backup can be found in the same directory where the scripts folder is. And remember, you'll probably need to temporarily close out of Visual Studio in order to generate the CS files. Now we can go into Table People and look at the Person and DB Utils files. You can see two sections, the custom code and generated code sections. If we look at the generated code, it has a lot of CRUD, create, read, update, and delete methods generated for us. You can see down here that it's generated simple select statements, simple select count statements, simple select all statements, simple select all with order by statements, and simple exist statements. If we had foreign keys, it would also auto generate parent objects for us. We'll want to go to the readme.txt file and do what it says if it's our first time. So let's go into readme.txt. So let's see what it says. We need to add the below to your web.config file. So this is within the configuration. So copy and go to web.config. It should be below the connection strings and you can paste it. And then you can save. Now from web.config, we can enable and disable XML and RAM caching. If you have the database on the same computer as the web server, then you shouldn't need to cache. You can also choose to automatically get parents or not. This is good for debugging, but not good practice to release it with these set to true. And that concludes part one of this tutorial. If you'd like to watch part two, then you can click the annotation. If you'd like to download Database Wizard, you can visit beckergames.com. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome stuff from Becker Games. Thanks and I hope you enjoy.